Hello and welcome to this course on Building Intimacy with Christ. My name is Sean Stevenson Douglas and I'm the president of Aston College. Um, I want to share a little bit about my background with you because as we travel through a topic like this, it is important to know who's sharing, I, I would say, because we all do relate with Christ a little bit differently, even though uh, there are common pathways to meeting with Jesus. I, I grew up uh, sort of in and out of the church. My mom became a believer when I was a child, uh, a baby rather. I don't remember a time before she was a follower of Christ. Um, and as we grew up, I was, I was in the church and, and we did kids programs and, and youth group on and off, and of course Sunday morning on and off. Um, but my heart was maybe cold toward the Lord. At least it wasn't intimate. I certainly wouldn't have used that word for my relationship with Jesus at that time. Uh, so it wasn't until I was about 19 years old that I would say that I really became a disciple of the Lord. And he pursued me all, the, all those years, and he sowed and planted important seeds in my life. Um, but it wasn't until then that I would say my, my real um, walk of closeness with Jesus began. And very shortly thereafter, I joined a program called Street Invaders, uh, which is a, a youth discipleship and evangelism uh, program. Happens in the summer. Did three weeks uh, of that in New Brunswick. And then returning to Saskatchewan, where I grew up, I, I felt the call to Bible college. In fact, that happened while I was at Street Invaders, because I, I had a sense that full-time ministry might be in my future. When I arrived uh, at Eston College as a freshman those years ago, I very quickly um, discovered that I loved studying connection with the Lord. Any topic that would bring me to a place where I could examine the mechanics and, and the heart, really, because mechanics makes it so sound so inhuman, the heart of connecting with Jesus, um, with growing in, in deeper knowledge of the Father, and by being filled up with the Holy Spirit, I loved those things. And I feel like when, when that's all focused on our Savior, on the incarnate Lord, which we're going to get to a little bit later, these pieces of our Christian life, they all fall into their proper places. And so that's why I say at the beginning of this video, it's a privilege for me to, to share this with you, because I just feel like this is the foundation stone. We don't build our faith on, on many, many of the aspects of our faith. We are told to build our faith on Jesus himself, on our cornerstone. And so there's going to be three broad avenues of learning as you go through this course. Number one is that I want to teach um, mindsets and heart postures that will help us go deeper in our faith and our relationship with Jesus. These will be con concepts and truths and um, maybe would be more, more cognitive or, or, or more mental, rational in nature. Um, but what they are meant to, to give us is a perspective, a vantage point for how to view our relationship with Jesus. But we don't want to just stop there. We want this to be embodied and we want this to be lived. So the second avenue is going to be practical tools and behaviors that we can adopt to create spaces for our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength to love Christ more. Finally, we're going to do some reading as well. And so I have asked that uh, you would journey with me through a book called Knowing God by J.I. Packer. Uh, it's important for you to read and to reflect on the, on the assigned readings, the, the various sections and chapters that we're going to look at together before you watch the video that I do. I think uh, it would be best for you to have your own thoughts and reflections on that before you hear what I have to say. So you can think of those particular sessions, those particular topics as uh, kind of like you and I being in a book club together and, and uh, you get to hear my thoughts and I get to hear yours, that sort of thing. It's going to be impossible for you to rush through this course. It is designed to go slow. Why? Because I want you to actually practice the things that we're talking about. This isn't just an information download. This is meant to be a lifestyle change that will lead to transformation. So this is about your head, yes, but your heart and your hands as much as anything else as well. So you, you might be able to read through the content online quickly and watch these videos quickly, but if you really want to grow in your relationship with Jesus, and if you really want to achieve that intimacy with Christ, um, that this course is titled after, um, then it's going to take some time. So in the next video, I'm going to introduce you to an approach that we're going to use throughout the course um, for how some of that time will work, that time away from your computer or your device that you're viewing these classes on, how that's going to look. Uh, pretty much every lesson is going to include um, a focus on a spiritual, one or more spiritual practices. 
So um, to know them, to know them doesn't just mean to have learned how they work. Once again, it's not just cognitive. It's not just going to be in our heads. To know these different spiritual practices means to have done them and to understand them from the inside. So please don't just click through this course. Complete the exercises, understand them from the inside, and embrace the growth that the Holy Spirit has for you. Next, I should say that we're going to spend uh, a fairly significant amount of time in the Bible as we go through this course, and I'm going to give you a number of supplemental readings. If you don't have time to go through them necessarily, um, you know, uh, all, all right now, you can always refer back to the course as well. Not all of them are going to be required readings, but uh, if you strike a topic that really grabs your heart, of course you can go deeper there. And, uh, and that's because one of the clearest ways that we encounter Jesus is through the Bible, of course. So I want to give you lots of opportunities to do that. Let's look at, at Scripture right now, shall we? So if you, uh, you want to open up a page or turn in your Bible or just follow along on the screen, we're going to look at John 15, verses 1 to 11. It says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he removes He prunes every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I in you. Just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. If anyone does not remain in me, he or she is thrown aside like a branch and withers. They gather them, throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete." A group of friends and colleagues and I were um, pursuing Christ together and doing ministry. And uh, we received a charge from a seasoned uh, and compelling and fruitful missionary who we happened to hear at a conference one time. And his message was very, very simple. He said, you must abide in Christ daily. This daily abiding is our lifeblood. He challenged us into that. We were just a small band of of disciples, um, but we took that charge very seriously. New dimensions in our faith began to open up as we put abiding front and center and made it our our priority, really, as we gathered and in our individual um, devotional lives with Jesus. Um, So we meditated on these words of Jesus, especially from John 15, which which is where that language of abiding comes from. And and we made many attempts in different ways to live them out. And and what happened was... uh, the Holy Spirit started to create new levels of fruit for us in different ways. So one of my friends, he talked about how the presence of God started to manifest in his home so much that he would just open up his hands and he would feel like he literally entered into a physical encounter with Jesus. I I know others of us started to describe it as if there was an inner tabernacle or an inner sanctuary that we could easily go into where Jesus was just waiting inside all the time. We experienced among us as well some, some really significant transformations of character. People just um, overcoming sin issues, of course, and other personality um, flaws, if I can use that word, maybe, maybe sounds offensive, but that was how they would describe it. Some flaws in their personality that were overcome. But the biggest fruit was, was actually around us as well. That uh, as we went out, maybe we shared the gospel or, or we interacted with other believers, that fruit that even if we strived for, we couldn't have produced, began to just fall into our lap. Opportunities we didn't deserve and, and things that we didn't orchestrate or structure, they began to happen around us as Jesus moved, as we made priority, our, 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 uh, sorry, as we made abiding our priority. My one good friend named Josh, who was a part of that group, he summarized this passage in Luke, sorry, in John 15, and it's stuck with me ever since. Josh would say this, If we abide in him, fruit is inevitable. If we don't, it is impossible. Let me just say that one more time. If we abide in him, fruit is inevitable. But if we don't, it's impossible. So what does it really mean to abide in Christ? That is the question we're going to answer through the rest of this course. So thanks for journeying with me.